to California. Some cities have a unique history filled with stories about the good guys and the bad guys. Most of these are well known, while for some cities like Folsom, California, it requires digging a bit deeper, kind of like the gold miners did in 1849 on their quest to find fortunes along the American River. So let's head down memory lane to learn how one man's East Coast knowledge set this town's course when he found an even better way to get rich by leveraging land, sacred water, newly discovered technology, politics, and believe it or not, even prisoners to do his bidding. And if you love music, several generations later, you may even recall how singer Johnny Cash got in on a piece of the action at Folsom Prison. Far from Folsom Prison. Hi, I'm Michael. And I'm Grace. And we're California, California Travel, Travel Videos. Videos. And we are here today in the beautiful Folsom area. Come with us. We're going to take a look from Granite City to Folsom, then and now. What if I told you the town itself wasn't always called Folsom? Yes, prior to 1946, it was known as Granite City, just one of the many towns that rose up along the American River during the Gold Rush era. Small communities that were all in search of just one thing, gold. To begin, we will learn some of the many stories about a man named Horatio Gates Livermore and how he and his sons helped to shape the town of Folsom. We will also explore Four topics about Folsom, California. Folsom Lake, Folsom Dam, Folsom Prison, and the Folsom Power Plant. We will also discover some of the original plans as well as some of the twists and turns along the way that made Folsom we now see today. Let's start with Folsom Lake. Today we can see a beautiful super bloom of lupin in some of the places that are normally filled with water. The water levels this year are already lower than what they normally are by the end of summer, and it's only the month of April. Today it's hard to imagine that when the lake was first created, it was built to help resolve some of the chronic flooding issues that the Sacramento area had been plagued with over the previous century. The Folsom Lake State Recreational Area was first established in 1956 after the creation of the new Folsom Dam. But what if I told you that at one time there were several communities where we see the lake today? When the water is low like it is this year, you can see the remnants of yesteryear and old mining towns like Salmon Falls and Mormon Island. During the gold rush, people started coming to the area from all around the world in hopes of finding gold. Little communities like Rattlesnake Bar were springing up all over the South Fork and North Fork of the American River. It didn't take too long before these little communities were becoming small towns where thousands of people were now living. When the gold rush brought the miners and their families to the area, their need for water resulted in the Natoma Water Company. This new company was established by no other than, yep, Horatio Gates Livermore in 1851. At the time, it was merely a 20-mile ditch that would divert water from the American River and to the miners that were seeking gold. As we will see, Horatio and his sons would soon come to play an even greater role in Folsom's history. First though, let's fast forward to just over 100 years after the gold rush, when the United States government would eventually purchase most of the area for the Folsom Project. Part of that is what we have today with the Folsom Lake Reservoir that is now managed by the California Department of Parks and Recreation. Almost 5% of the state's taxes come from tourism, now raking in over $12 billion a year. Folsom Lake State Park offers visitors today a variety of recreational activities that includes camping, swimming, hiking, biking, just to name a few. And boating is always a favorite too. During the hot summer months, it is one of the most visited parks in the state. Oh, he's got one of his dogs. He's gonna put a life vest on. For those wanting to visit, the day use fee is just $12. 
There are also three campgrounds within the park. Hit the bell and make sure to subscribe and we'll take you to one of those on our next video. We will also include a link under the description to make your reservations. It's off limits to the public, it's rarely photographed, and it's heavily guarded. This is the Folsom Dam. Correction, this is what's left of the old Folsom Dam. The Folsom Dam that we know today was built by the Army Corps of Engineers in 1955 as part of a multi-purpose project. Sadly, for us RVer types, there are no Army Corps of Engineer camping facilities within 50 miles. Now, the project had been proposed as early as the 1930s to the state of California. However, it would be almost 20 years before it was authorized after the war in 1949. The primary function for the new dam would provide flood control for the low-lying Sacramento County and the Central Valley project below. This project would also be funded to include hydroelectricity, irrigation, and municipal water. Currently, California's population has grown to more than 40 million residents and in 2021, water is becoming the new gold. But what if I told you the dam that we know today was not the original one? Now that's right, the original concept for the dam had begun in 1867. The idea stemmed from one man's dream of a west coast industrial city nestled in the foothills of California. Yes, you guessed it, once again, Horatio Gates Livermore was setting his sights on the future. He had originally come to California in 1850, seeking for himself what everyone else was seeking at the time, gold. A group of miners were walking along a trail towards the Sierra Buttes Mine in Sierra County. The night before, there had been a lot of rain, and the men couldn't believe their eyes. Miners had walked that trail countless times, but it took the rain to wash away a little of the soil to reveal this enormous nugget. The monumental nugget comes in at 48.1 kilograms in weight, and has to be seen to be believed. By 1854, he had been elected to represent El Dorado County in the state senate and soon he would be joined by his two sons, Horatio Jr. and Charles, as they would take control over the existing Natoma Water and Mining Company. By 1861, they realized that if they could make their fortune more easily by securing water rights along the American River, the plan was to harness the water of the American River and transform Folsom into a manufacturing logging center, like that of his native New England home state, where water wheels had long been used to operate factories. At least that was the plan before technology came along. So his dreams were all coming true, well at least he thought so. After a year, when the operation began to run out of funding and the labor provided to be awfully expensive, the Livermores pivoted and entered into a promising contract with the state of California. The first of the cell blocks for the Folsom Prison were completed in 1878. But, what if I told you that the second oldest prison in California was originally going to be located 12 miles northwest of where it is today, in a town called Rockland? Yes, even 150 years ago, politics were involved when in 1868, the one-time state senator Horatio Livermore gave 350 acres of the water company's land in exchange for prison labor to build his new dam and canal system. What could possibly go wrong? As much as some things change, other things remain the same. And with government now involved, it would be six more years before the groundbreaking would finally begin. The prison was built in a spot that once had been known as Stony Bar here, millions in gold nuggets had been found just 25 years before the groundbreaking. Could that be the real reason it took 12 years to complete the project? Things that make you go, hmm. Finally, in 1880, Folsom Prison was opened and the prisoners were being moved in from the cramped and overcrowded San Quentin, a prison located closer to San Francisco. Sadly, the eldest Livermore didn't live long enough to fulfill his own dream. 
But stay tuned and see how after several failed attempts in the logging business, his sons, Horatio Jr. and Charles, played yet another part in shaping Folsom's future. Folsom Prison was the first prison in the entire country to have electricity. By 1930, a factory that would make license plate for the state had opened. And today, that same factory is the sole operator of producing as many as 50,000 plates per day. The Folsom Prison gained popularity around the world when recording artist Johnny Cash released his hit, Folsom Prison Blues. I know I can't be free. The song had been written by Johnny himself when he was in the United States Air Force and stationed in Germany. His inspiration for the song came after seeing the movie Inside the Walls of Folsom Prison. Johnny would eventually perform three times at the prison and even record a live album from there. Today, in his memory, there is a two and a half mile trail dedicated to Mr. Cash. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell as we'll cover the trail. And now in our final segment from this town's amazing history. Let's find out just how Folsom Prison was the first prison to have electricity. So here's where the historic dam was, the canal, and that's where all the labor came from, Folsom Prison. Contract and labor disagreements continually delayed the progress on the dam and its canal. It would not be until 1893 that water would first flow through the canal walls. Now Hiroshio Livermore Jr., like his father, originally thought to use the energy of the falling water to power sawmills and an industrial network driven by water wheels. However, after many failed attempts, the two Livermore sons saw a new opportunity. So they could use the dam to supply water to the powerhouse. And second, using the newly discovered alternating current electrical technology, more commonly which we refer to as AC, they could generate the power in Folsom and send the power to customers far down the river to Sacramento. I never knew there was something called a four bay. The gates, the penstocks, yes, transformers up above, the generators down below, and then it comes out the tail raceway. Horatio G. Livermore came to California for gold. He soon realized that selling water and water power was a better business opportunity. Some of his projects failed, and some of the others experienced long delays. However, these failures and delays paved the way for something new. Livermore's sons would oversee the completion of one of the world's first hydropower systems. So on July 13, 1895, with two generators in actual operation, electricity was successfully transmitted over uninsulated copper wires the full 23 miles down to Sacramento. Or to deal with the state saying, if you give me prison labor to dig this canal for, uh, this ditch, I'll give you additional land to expand your prison because there was, they wanted expansion on the prison. Yeah, and it was originally uh, built uh, to supply electrical power for the streetcars in Sacramento. That was. I had no idea. That, huh. that was the sole. That purpose. was the whole deal. Uh, it arguably, it was the first thing in the United States, and I say arguably because th there's a lot of little hooks in there. But this was supposedly the first one to transmit. Uh, high voltage, 11,000 kV, uh, any distance, mm -hmm. and it went uh, 22 miles Sacramento. So they, they designed it, they built it, and uh, and it, lo and behold, it actually worked. <laughs> yeah, you sure pray it does. Uh, yeah. yeah, big investment. Oh. So the railroad says, okay, um, you know what, guys? That's a hell of a good idea. Why don't you run a line from from uh, uh, the the, the the streetcar barn uh, to the roundhouse because we need power too and we're you know we're creating our own ugly. Uh, so Livermore says, yeah, sure, we can do that. The river and head on the well, but no, before we do that, we would like him to, since he's been here quite a few years, we just, you know, I, I, I love movies, like I don't know if you've ever seen Young Frankenstein where they have the electricity and <laughs> things are all sparking. <laughs> yeah. I thought you might just start this up for us for a little bit and have a little... Get this baby going. Oh, that's 
receive it. Okay. You don't know how we've discussed that. <laughs> you get you get ten, twelve doses together. Most of them. Oh are boy. And we, you know, we. Uh, it's just it, it's bizarre. <laughs> Now this event was so epic that newspapers in Sacramento and San Francisco covered it in detail on their front pages the next day. Sacramento even went as far as to celebrate this technological breakthrough a few months later with a grand electric carnival stringing electric lights along its downtown streets and decorating the state capitol with thousands of bulbs. The whole affair caught the attention of the entire state and even the nation. The powerhouse ran in continuous operation for 57 years when finally the original Folsom Dam across the American River was removed in 1952 to make way for the new much larger Folsom Dam. In fact the Central Valley Project produces 2,000 megawatts of low-power hydroelectric energy to Californians. I don't know, Grace, it sounds to me like Folsom should really have been named Livermore. What's up with that? I agree. However, there's already a town in Livermore that had been established in the 1800s. Well, go figure. That Horatio really got around then, didn't he? And it wasn't named after Horatio. Ironically, there was another Livermore. Not even related, actually. Huh. Well, what's up with that? Okay, well, another story for another day, I suppose. In the meantime, we hope that you enjoyed learning about some of California gold country as much as we did. We are always amazed by the stories, behind the stories, and as Folsom celebrates its 75-year anniversary as an incorporated city, we now know, as Paul Harvey would say, the, the rest, rest of, of the, the story. story. Happy trails. To you. Until we meet again. Peace out. Have you been to California? Seen the sights and people there